Hello everyone, and welcome to VTRX. This is race two. We're at Thompson Motors Mo Mo Thompson Speedway. We're at Thompson Speedway in the beautiful USA Alaska track, as you can see right now. However, it's also being used for SRX, and that is what we're racing today. Because VTubers are going around in circles in the superstar racing experience. Cars, what's a beautiful thing. Last week we were at Lime Rock Park and saw, um, well, quite a bit of very action-packed racing. And today, obviously, we're coming to a second, a different, different way of racing. Lime Rock obviously being a road course, and today we're doing ovals. And it is going to be very interesting to see who can do what. But, as... Some of you might know, I'm Julian Strasser, and I am mostly a road racer. So, luckily I have some help with me, with me here to explain how Oval works. Thank you for joining me, April. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice to be here. Uh, I'm sure we can figure this out. I've not done Oval racing in a while, but it's like riding a bike. I don't think you ever really forget it, do you? Let's let's surely hope so. So, what are we doing here today, April? So, t as you said already, we are doing round two of the Track EU VRTX series. Uh, we are just wrapping up qualifying at the moment, which will lead us into uh, two heats that will set the actual grid for the race. How that works is everyone who's qualified in an odd position goes into heat one, where they will decide the starting order of the left-hand lane. So that's whoever's finished first in qualifying, third, fifth, so on and so forth. And after that's done, Heat 2 is doing the same thing for all the even positions. So second, fourth, sixth, etc. And then once we've decided the order of each lane, that's our starting order for our feature race, which is 45 minutes long, with a caution thrown every 10 minutes, what we call our fun flag. Just to keep the field nice and tight, nice and close, and keep the action nice and frantic. That sounds that sounds like an amazing prospect, and we are already in the server for the first heat race. The cars should be starting to line up soon. Oh yes, they're already lining up, and there's something interesting that I can already tell you, because we have, in this race, both Ruby and Reska, who have been dominating the times in the practice session. Absolutely, they're currently... Uh number one and two in the standings as well uh finished first and second in round one at lime rock so it looks like the season's shaping up to be ruby versus reska which will be nice and exciting i'm looking forward to that exactly it's going to be a very interesting first heat race already but before we go get there let us quickly take a look at the championship standings there we go. We have Ruby Nekomata leading the championship standings after their win last time around at Lime Rock Park. Right behind is Reska Kiyosu, who, as we already said, they are the two quickest around here, or have been in practice at least. And afterwards, we have Eric Gregis, who is currently the third person in the standings. I believe they are here today as well. Um, but yeah, probably in the other splits. Then we have Lithium Fox, who obviously has the most eye racing experience out of everyone here. At least that's what I know. Because, because boy, does Lithium have a lot of knowledge around eye racing. Then we have Lena Recoware, David Katz, Asa the Nympire, Tars the 14th, Soleil Jurocrox. Imantric Saints and Wyatt Natus. Those are the drivers that so far attended, well, attended last race at Lime Rock Park. And then we also have, theoretically, Akita Asasagawa, Polukai, Blanc Ryozaki, Victor Masato, and Dirty Kohai. Blanc Ryozaki and Dirty Kohai, I am very certain that they are here today. So... Yeah, actually, Akito's here as well today, as he is in this, in this heat even right now. Excellent, nice. So yeah, this Boys. heat... Sorry, this heat is going to be Ruby and Soleil in the first... Well, the first two positions. 
And then we have Reska Livium in the second row. Uh, Akito and Mentrix in the third row. And for some reason, I think Wreckaware should be in here. Uh, but is currently not cr gridded. Is showing up on our timing screens. Well. I mean, that's going to be unfortunate because that's going to be a default back of the line. So, a uh, rough start lining up there. Well, having said that, we've not talked about the risk in this as well because uh, although we know these drivers have all done a good lap in qualifying, if the heat goes wrong, then that lap goes to waste and start the race from the back as well. Oh. Yeah. That is true. There is a lot of risk involved in this, and it is a rather short race. And we're coming around, and it seems like... Wow, uh, Ruby has a good start right in front of Reska there. It goes to the outside very heavily, and Reska takes the inside line immediately. So Leo Drukrox also looking to get some positions made up. However, they all run a bit wide. Oh, that's very close to touching there between Reska and Soleil. Definitely. We just see Ruby there struggling to keep a clean line through the corners, just running a little bit wide all the way through. Could be cold tires. Either way, it's losing positions. She'll catch up, I'm sure, but it won't be easy. See here is welcome through uh, onto the... Is that the back straight? It's... Well, that's, the front, that's the front straight, I think. That's because the front straight. Okay, cool. I've never raced this track personally, <laughs> but nonetheless, we can see Reska running ahead of it as well, like keeping that lead quite, quite consistently, quite confidently, especially. While still, we see a bit of chaos going on in that battle for second place. And in second place, we currently have Soleil Drocrox. And then behind, we have Lithium and Ruby, who are right next to each other, battling for the third position right now. And I heard, I think I heard someone in the wall. Yeah, I think I heard that too. Uh, I think I saw someone glancing into the grass there. Nonetheless, we see Ruby just pulling ahead there as well, slipping into third. It's hard to tell whether or not the inside line or outside line is faster, because it can be so variable here. But nonetheless, it looks like Ruby's making it work right now, and she just needs to stay right there just to secure second in this lane. Making it lap traffic as well, leftovers from the accident we heard, maybe? Making it work, however, seems to be Reska, who is pulling away from that battle for second position right now. Definitely. Reska making a very clear statement ahead of the start of the actual race. Yeah, I think there's some damage to Akito's car, as Akito is right now in the pits. Oh, that's unfortunate. We were talking about earlier about the risk drivers are taking going into this heat race. It's so important to keep it clean, and uh, that's why. Oh, I think Ruby got a good exit here, however, making it... Are uh, going taking the lower line. Now in front. Again, again, Ruby favoring that low line as well. Seems to get a little bit more speed through the corners uh, on that low line, but not carrying enough coming onto the straights as well. We see it being a little bit back and forth. Ruby getting a nose cut off a little bit there, and losing pace and losing third as well. Oh yeah, that, that sort of looked like Soleil not giving enough space uh, on the. On the lower side there for Ruby, which sort of backed Ruby up. Um, how how is oval etiquette in that regard? Uh, it's pretty much the same as in road racing. Everyone wants to be given the space to just run the line that they're on. If you've got your car alongside, then you expect to be left enough space to just keep it there without getting pushed off your line. So, yeah, never a good feeling when it happens to you and an easy way to get tempers going. But... Hopefully our drivers can keep their tempers and manage a little bit better than actual NASCAR drivers do. Well, we don't want to see any intentional takeouts. That is one of the things that I see the most in whenever NASCAR comes up on my YouTube recommended. Oh, definitely. As well as the uh, punch-ups in the pit lane afterwards. Oh, God. Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Less about that then. More on the racing then. As we see... Uh... Oh... 
We see Fox here challenging for second, uh, for second as well. Still a hot chase going in that second place battle right now. Ruby still hanging on to the back. Nine laps to go. Nine laps to make moves and try and make the most of this. But, uh, yeah, at the moment we see that number 420 card looking quite confident and comfortable in second. I just wanted to say that it looked like Livium uh, last lap went onto the skirt, but it does not seem like Thompson Speedway has an actual skirt in the banked sections. It's more of a... Well, it's just the lower line there that is has not as recently been resurfaced. Yeah, and the perspective from these camera angles is a little deceptive on it as well, so kind of hard to tell how usable that actually is, but... Uh... Nonetheless, we see all three of them steering clear a little bit of it, staying, leaving a bit of distance to that inside edge. Yeah, but Ruby's been getting much closer now to Livium, and Livium is already also catching up to Soleil. So I think they will be battling this out uh, coming towards the end. We're already half, uh, we're already past halfway in this race. Only six laps to go, as we are being told. Definitely, we see Drocox going a little bit defensive there, actually going all the way down to the apex through that corner, just to try and back these two up into each other. Because of course, if uh, Fox and Nikomata can start battling, then that's going to slow them down, same as in road racing, and give Drocox a little bit of breathing room to hold on to second. There's only five laps to go now, and Livium is very close on that 420 car. Livium, as I said, of course, has a lot of experience racing around here. However, Soleil's favorite way to race is also in ovals. So, no discounting the seeming lack of experience in relation to Livium here. Definitely, completely agree. One of the things that's quite refreshing looking at these standings as well is just the variety of countries that people are from. Uh, normally I would have expected to see the American flags like uh, Canada, the USA, and Mexico floating to the top as oval racing is such, is such a big part of racing over there, whereas less so in Europe. But despite that, everyone seems to be quite comfortable and uh, it's all getting quite mixed up. It's quite refreshing to see. I quite like that. Well, you, you say that, however, this battle that we've been watching here is Canada, USA, and Mexico. That is true. <laughs> that is true. However, in the lead is Rasko Kiyosu, who, of course, races under the British flag. Then we have Mentrix in fifth position currently. Let's uh, look back there. Who's being caught by Resco right now. Mentrix, of course, racing for Germany. And Akito Asazagawa, who crashed earlier, racing for France. Uh, we also have Rekuwer, not currently on the server. Um, however, back to our leading group here. It seems like we have reached the last lap of the race as the checkered flag is showing. And it seems like this battle is pretty much closing how it went the entire time. Soleil finishing in P2 after Resca Kyoso. Then Livium Fox in P3. Ruby in P4, Mentrix in P5, and Akito in P6. And you know, I just remembered something, I think, which is that Reko is showing up here because Reko is signed up, but did not have time earlier to join for the heat race in time. So she's going to join. They are going to join. I'm sorry, I don't know their pronouns. They are going to join um, for the feature race, at least. And hopefully still be able to make some progress with the that oval racing always brings as we see the grid lining up for heat two here as well a reminder this is to set the starting order for the right lane in the feature race yes and in here we have in the first row we have david katz and tars the 14th here on the outside getting a bit uh slow at the start we have dirty kohai where are we Oh, there we go. We have Dirty Kohai. Then we have Eric Gregg is also in the th in the second row. Further behind we have Asa and Wyatt Natis and Blanc Ryuzaki seems to currently not be gridded up. So similar situation to 
Reco in the last race. Yeah, we can see it there in the formation as well. The right-hand lane is two cars long, while the left one is four cars long. Feels a little bit off balance, but uh, if that's the order we've got to start with, then I'm sure these drivers will figure out what the order should be by the end of the race by themselves. Well, it seems like everyone is gridding up nicely right now. Uh, they're Definitely. Going, we see the lights around. out there, safety car in, and uh, these drivers are all lining up for the start, finding their starting pace, watching those lights, looking for the green light, and they're green. Uh, not sure what's going on our overlay there, but nonetheless, we see David Katz are running away into the lead. Number 53 managing to take second. Number 53, and that's Dirty Kohai, another one of our British drivers. And we have Tars, the 14th, currently in third position. Uh, Eric Gregis and Asa are currently being side by side with White Natus right behind them. Definitely, you can see them both trying to just use as much of the track as they can, widen it out, trying to just leave just a little bit more than a car space to the wall for both of them to carry on. Asa losing out on the inside line here, but nonetheless thinking ahead, thinking one, one corner ahead, two corners ahead, three corners ahead. Oval racing become very strategic, trying being careful not to lose ground to sixth place. Further up, we have Tars, who's kind of in between, uh, get, well, sort of has to defend from Eric Regis here. Eric, of course, fighting for P3 in the overall championship right now, but Tars does not want, definitely not want to give any way to people who have more points and are in the fight for something. That would be boring. It really would. Uh, it would be much more interesting to try and just take a few more points and keep the battle interesting. Oh, and it we'll seems see like we have Asa in the wall, and that is why it's chance for to take P5 away. Definitely. Uh, we caught a glimpse of it, but I think I saw Asa nick the inside grass there through that corner, and he just unsettled the car and sent on a trajectory up into the wall. Nonetheless, Asa back alongside through the inside line. A little bit of contact there. Not quite able to make the move done here. She does not want to give that position up. No, definitely. And now that she's lost it, she definitely wants to go and take it back as well. And it looks to me like she's ready to fight for it. But I wonder if there has been any damage. Uh, how did it look to you? Do you think that could have in incurred any damage on the car? Uh, I think it might have. It might just be very slight damage. Slight aero damage, which at these kinds of speeds in a 700 horsepower car, hopefully not too much trouble. Suspension should be mostly straight. In fact, from what I can see from outside, I don't see anything I'm concerned about. I think all I'm seeing is Asa being concerned by that gap in front, as we see Eric Gregg is starting to get a little bit of pressure here as well. As far as I'm concerned, Eric Gregg is also, like me, more on the road racing side usually. So this is potentially a far cry to what he's used to. Oh, definitely. It's, uh, it's a difficult thing to adapt to, driving on ovals, because a lot of the theory is the same. You know, you still want to take a good line for a corner, you're still thinking about uh, going outside, inside, outside as you go through a corner, things like that. But it all happens so much slower that you need to be much more in tune with the minutia of how your car moves, and also uh, how you position it to, to find a way past the driver in front as well. What I've been seeing these past few laps is that uh, Eric takes a much higher line than Wyatt's right behind him. Uh, care to explain what, why why could they be doing that? It could be just trying to feel around the track looking for grip, because not only does it get rubbered in, uh, like we're used on road tracks, but track temperature also affects things. The hotter part of the track will help the tyres stay warm and grippy as well, and help you go through the corner quicker. It could also just be something about the car setup or driving style that settles in nicely. I don't know why I said car setup there, every, but every driver here is on the same uh, car setup. We're running the fixed setup, so that is consistent. The only difference here is the drivers. Yeah, and it seems like one driver looking to make a difference right now is Tarles, who's catching up to Dirty Kohai, look, looking to make it in USA P1 and 2. 
definitely. Especially because every position here counts for two positions on the feature race start as well. So making progress here really is going to be huge and make a big difference. And I thought I'd just take the opportunity to say I'm trying my best to be as American as I can today. I made myself some PB&Js. So getting real into the mood. I think you've uh, immersed yourself in the culture a little bit more than I have there. All I've got to show for it is I'm drinking Coca-Cola right now. Ah, uh, that's nice. Hey. I, I wish I wish I could have some... Okay, I'm not going to say anything wrong right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit early to start getting unhinged. <laughs> now, the thing, the shortening for Coca-Cola is potentially a word that can be taken out of context as something very different. And I would not want that right now. So we have two battles currently going on. Wyatt Nates is still following Eric Gregis, and it seems like Tarles is still trying to catch up enough to Dirty Kohai to make a move. Definitely. That gap's still a little bit open as well. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of slipstreaming there going on. So uh, right now the difference really is just going to be in raw pace through the corners. The driver's not disrupting each other too much right now. Just... It's just about keeping it consistent right now. Well, we have to mention, however, is David Katz, real quick, is just two seconds up the road from Dirty Kohai. Not really a problem keeping the pace for him. No, no problem at all. Uh, much like Reska, uh, running away with the lead there a little bit. You see Eric Gregg is under immense pressure. Is this going to be too wide into here? It is. Not quite an overlap, but nonetheless, Eric Gregg is seeing that in their mirrors and just opting to leave the space. Just keep it safe. It looks like it's worked out, so... Correct me, choice, definitely the correct, one. correct me if I'm wrong, but taking the higher line usually gives you a better exit onto the straight. Uh, if you're too wide, then yes, because you'll be driving around a larger radius. So your car will just naturally be going quicker than the person on your inside in that situation. And that'll help give you a little bit of a head start onto the straight. So how would you be able to overtake uh, on the inside then? On the inside, um, you're usually looking to control the lines a little bit more there, I think. So it's a lot easier to leave space for someone on the outside, in my experience, than it is on the inside. The person on the inside controls uh, the movements a lot more. And because that's usually where the grip is as well, that's where you want to be for lap time, in my experience. I could be wrong here, this might be different, but that's my understanding at the moment. So if you want to actually catch up and make a move, through the corners is a good place to do it, and the inside line is a good way to do it, through the corners. And time has been flying, as David Katz has already taken the checkered flag in front of Dirty Kohai and Tal's the 14th right now. And it seems like Eric Gregg has kept it in front of Wyatt Natus as well. And finishing in P6 of this heat was Arsa the, the Empire. So, real quick, I have to fix something. So, um, what did you think so far of these heat races that we've seen? who can get a move done and, and where. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing everybody mixed up. I think what we've seen in the two heats is, let's say, good ingredients in the recipe for a good race. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll have a good race. Uh, I mean, we're definitely going to have a good race with the uh, every 10 minutes we're going to have a caution flag, I think they said. That's right, yes. We're calling those our uh, fun flags. So after 10 minutes of green flag running, a caution will be called, which means the safety car will come out and control the pace and no overtaking. All the cars will form up like they would for a rolling start like we've seen in both heats. And then once that is over, they will be released to carry on green flag racing. So there really is no building up a lead like we've seen uh, our leaders do in the two heats. That lead will be taken away from them and they will be immediately under threat as soon as a fun flag is thrown. And we're currently in the warm-up for the race. So it looks to be a bit of a warm-up session that we have included in here. 
And we now see that, for example, Recoware is in. Recoware is in now, so at least we've got we've got them racing. That is that is good. Definitely, yeah. Feels good to be picking up the stragglers from before, and uh, that's one of the other benefits of the fun flag, I suppose. Um, as much as starting up front is going to be helpful for just finding an early lead and staying there. They will stop anyone from running away from it, so through pure racecraft, someone who's starting from the back after missing the heats could well make a lot of progress here. So yeah, as we saw earlier, we have in here... There's not everyone here. Oh, this seems to be the first uh, split. Warm-up only for the first uh, split. So for the first heat race drivers. Oh, well, that's odd. Mm. I hope that's not a sign of a server issue. Uh... In any case, we we have in here, as we saw earlier, we have Ruby, Nekomata, we have Reska Kyoso. Those two are currently doing the best two best laps. Then we have Wyatt Natus here in the pink Pepto Bismol car. Okay, that's a sponsor I didn't think I'd see. Certainly a choice, isn't it? <laughs> Fair play to them. We have Akito Asazagawa who's just pulling off here and jumping a bit. <laughs> Livium Fox. Of course, racing in the turquoise car as we saw last time around. On Lime Rock Park. Arsenal the Umpire in the black, white and pink KRT car. I'm entering science in the Opal. Is that what that livery is supposed to be? An Opal? Well, I didn't. If you if you look at the front of the car, then you can see a small Opal logo. Oh, that's excellent! Oh, I really like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Then we have Recoware in the light blue and. Pink, white, um, what flag is that again? Uh, that would be the trans rights flag, I believe. That is a trans rights flag. Yeah, so that is easily recognizable on the grid. And as has been asked right now in the chat, I have no idea what blub means, and I speak German. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused by this one as well, so I guess we'll just carry on watching our drivers circulate, uh, getting back into the zone, ready for 45 minutes of what I'm sure will be non-stop mayhem. And I can't wait, I'm so excited right now. Oh! And it seems like there was a little bit of mayhem right there. Was that Liv I think that was Livium Fox just spinning there uh, on the main straight. Yeah, I think so, I think you're right. Uh, I guess it's um, another thing, uh, whenever I'm doing practice for a race, obviously a little bit of contact here between Rekoware and is that Nikomata? Yes. Uh, just spending warm-up and practice, just having the accidents you don't want to have in the race. These drivers, of course, are adjusting to a full fuel load now as well, since they need to drive a lot more than seven minutes. Our drivers exactly. can, of course, opt to do pit stops during the cautions, I believe, but that doesn't necessarily mean they will every time because it's quite an easy way to jump forward during our fun flags if you don't. Yes, and now let's see if this works. Yes! We have a grid! Which is Reska Kioso and David Katz are starting in the first row. It's going to be the 13 and the 41. Then we have the 420 of Salel Drurkrox and the 53 of Dirty Kohai in the second row. In the third row, we have Livium Fox, the 47, and Tals, the 14th. The 14. And we have Ruby Nekomata and Eric Gregis in the fourth row. The 40 and the th 31. The 96 of Imantric Science, the Opal. Right next to the, the 5 of White Natus. We have Akito Sasagawa in the 56 and Asa the Nyampire in the 69. And on the second page, if we go to the end, we have Recoware and unfortunately not Blanc as they did not seem to join in time. 
That is a shame. But nonetheless, we've got enough here to get a good race going. I'm especially excited by seeing Asas and Yampire back as well. Back from a bit of a sim racing hiatus and sporting probably my favourite number on this grid as well. So I'm quite excited to see her back and see what she can do. Ruby, uh, Ruby Nikamata, of course, uh, finishing the heats with a bit of unfinished business as well. Currently leading our championship, but starting back in seventh, back there on the inside row, with a lot of progress to make to try and keep some momentum up in the championship as well. That'll be one to keep an eye on, I reckon. Yes, but the pace car is in. We're on the start finish line, and they are going. They are green. And there's already the first car taken out that is david katz turned around in the first corner and there is immediately a caution on the first lap we have a caution already before the uh, stream started we did a little bit of a a guessing between uh april and me i guess you were right either at the beginning or with the first caution flag yeah, I guess so. Although what I wasn't expecting was for it to be our race leader who got turned around, David Katz. Uh, uh, oh no, sorry, uh, second place starter. Nonetheless, front row. Difficult way to start the day. I guess it's just a bit of lines overlapping between David and Soleil there in the 410 car. Exactly, yeah. Uh, maybe a bit of enthusiasm as well for the first lap, just trying to start the race off with a lot of momentum, using as much of the track as possible, unfortunately just using a little bit too much. So in the pit lane currently, we have one car coming into the pits. That is Imantric Science, who has re received a bit of damage, crashing with Eric Gregis, I think in the same corner. Uh, we can actually take a look at what happened there. There's them right next to each other. Oh, and there's a bit of contact with Reco. It almost looks like they were going at different speeds for the race start there. Like, one of them just reacted to the green flag so much quicker, and they just couldn't manage the speed difference uh, coming out of the last corner. That's really unfortunate. So this is now Mentrix and David Katz, both in the pits, exiting the pits now as well, but they are going to be a lap down now. Well, David is actually still on the lead lap. However, Mentrix is a lap down, as well as Eric. Men Mentrix and Eric Gregis are both a lap down, it seems. So they will be... I don't know if we have the Lucky Dog rule enabled. Maybe they will get a chance to be on the lead lap once again later on. For their sake, I definitely hope so, because that's a difficult way to start a race. Uh, it's quite difficult to recover from something like that, even with cautions. It's, it's going to be difficult to find another lap here with uh, such a short time between each uh, fun flag. It's pretty much going to be some strategy going into that for them to catch up to the lead as we're coming back on the green and Reska is leading us out in front of Soleil who is immediately being caught up by Dirty Kohai and Livian Fox right behind. Definitely, we see those two getting quite cozy there, coming out of that corner as well. Uh, it looks like a battle brewing up. And uh, it looks like uh, we've got Ruby Nikamata there as well, already making a bit of progress in this race as well. No doubt benefiting from that early accident, taking David Katza out down a lap. It seems like we are... We are under caution again! The was two incidents right now. Let's see. We have Wyatt Natus who crashed. The Pepto Bismol. Coming to the inside line here. And coming together with Reco. It almost looks like Reco just wasn't ready for someone to be up the inside there. Just wasn't expecting that and tried to use the full line. And to be fair, that overtake developed quite quickly as well. So I can understand that, but still not the way you want things to go. Oh, and there's a bit of a grinning problem after the caution flags have come out where Soleil was turned around and it seems like Mentrix crashed again as well. So, unfortunate things happening here. 
The classic eye pacing, as has been called in the chat. Well, I sure hope we're not going to spend 90 of the 100 laps under caution, as there's honestly not much going on. It's just them gridding back up. I uh, I imagine this might be some drivers showing their inexperience. You know, people are more used to road racing, where this isn't such a big deal, as opposed to NASCAR, where it can be a bit of a bloodbath, and you can end up with quite frequent uh, safety cars like this. But I'm sure as uh, drivers start finding their flow with how the system works, hopefully we'll see that die down a little bit, and we can start getting some real green flag running. So, a quick check-in. We still have most of the cars on the lead lap. From Resca Kelso in P1 down to Eric Gregers in P11. All of them are now on the lead lap. Uh, Matrix is one lap down. Wyatt Natus is out of the race, it seems. And, am I seeing this correctly? No. Unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Brown Rizaki is still showing up, however, not in the server. Okay, so we have two cars out, and we're still left with 12 cars. We will be battling it out for 90 more laps. Definitely. Shame there for uh, Wyatt Nature, so uh, that looked like a pretty heavy hit into the wall. Uh, probably someone worried that the give you a second there uh someone worried that they won't be able to find progress back from being a lap down especially it looks like we're not getting lucky dogs right now if i'm understanding this correctly uh, it does not look like there are any lucky dogs called up right now no but it looks like we're about to get a green flag called uh, just in the safety car go in there all the cars lining up single file mostly and we're away here we go raska kyoso leading the way as uh, things immediately heat up towards the middle of the pack, we see uh, four cars running too wide, almost three wide there with Reco West slipping in between. And that's Ruby Nicomato around again, and another caution. It seems like there was a coming together between Akito Asasagawa and Ruby Nekomata there. Akito going a bit to the outside line there. It almost looks like uh, this track slipped back into single file driving, but with a tiny overlap left. Just being a little bit eager, I guess. That is not the way we want these restarts to go. Now the front of this car is... It, it, it seems longer than it than it looks from the inside. Well, it I is... I believe that, especially looking at the shape of the hood as well, the way it starts out flat and then dips down. It must be really difficult to gauge where that is. It doesn't help that, well, I, I reckon most of these drivers today here do not have a a spotter other than the iRacing integrated spotter. Or maybe crew chief, but I don't think they have anyone on staff to help them. No, just software solutions, and uh, hopefully those will be intelligent enough. I'd like to imagine that they are. Um, all these software programs, they need to be quite well refined, because it seems like everything on iRacing is. But still, they do get it wrong sometimes. Well, it's also that, on the, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you have to listen to the solutions. That is true, yeah. And uh, thankfully, it looks like we've come out of that caution with uh, no one else falling off the lead lap as well. Ruby Nikomata still on the lead lap. Lost a few positions, but importantly, didn't lose the lap. So that fight is still on. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost actually one person on the lead lap. That is Tars the 14th, who is now not in the race anymore. I wonder what happened there. If that's uh, another serious damage crash or something. Let's quickly see if we have the replay here. Oh! That was a bit of a rear ending there. Yeah, that was a heavy hit. And just pulls the car over then and there.
So we're at, la at lap 16 out of 100. Did we have a full green lap yet? Uh, we've had one, at least, I think. Um, there's been some of these where we've gone to the second or third lap, I think. But definitely nothing beyond that yet. Okay, so, fingers crossed that we'll get him. We'll get a, we'll get a green lap. I, I'm sure these drivers can manage it. It's just... Most, many of these drivers are road racers, as we said earlier, and they are not used to driving oval per se the entire time, like uh, Soleil, for example, is very often doing, or even Resca Kyoso, who's currently in the lead, as we're going back to green. Definitely, I already see things developing up to the free wide Acid Nyampa there on the inside. Slipping loose now on that one, we see Nico where there, uh... Holding the outside line for now. Still quite comfortably running too wide. Looks like our drivers are really starting to get comfortable here now. A little bit of a wall graze there, a little bit of touching with each other possibly. Nothing too dramatic, nothing we can't stop uh, can't carry on over. After all, this is this is America, this is stock car racing. Rubbing is racing, as they say. Rubbing is racing. Indeed. Especially through uh, the power of VTubers, as we see a uh, 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 fight for second developing up there. Well, is, is that Asa Nyanpa losing out a little bit more as well? There's currently the fight for seventh position, it seems, where Asa just lost out to David Katze. And also just managed to catch the wall there a little bit as well. Now under pressure from Ruby Nikomata, very experienced oval racer who's at this point done pretty much everything no doubt uh, she's got a few moves up her sleeve waiting to come out if we go back to Drocox under pressure here this is the battle for second under pressure from Lithium Fox not seeing an option to make a move just yet but nonetheless keeping the pressure on Fourth place catches up there as well, turning this into a small crane potentially. Fox tucked into that slipstream very close coming up to this corner. The low downforce cars, of course, so there's not much downforce to lose following someone for a corner. So that's all progress. We see Fox moving to the outside, going the long way round Drocox, and actually getting the move done here as well. Immediately, Drocox under pressure as well, giving Fox space to just run away and build a bit of a buffer, trying to just keep this a little bit safe. See Recoware also made good progress from the race start, also under pressure here. If I'm not mistaken, this is the battle for fifth currently. Still keeping it clean for the time being. Big dive coming up into turn three there as uh, Azu Sagawa gets turned around, and that's another caution. I don't want to say anything for the last, what was it now, eight laps or so that we went green? Uh, that was a good run, yeah. That was a good run uh, compared to the start. Um, however, it just takes one little moment to bring back out the caution laps. I mean, on the one hand, it's good. It means that people who do not have too much damage and do not need to pit can catch back up to the grid if they get turned around. So from that perspective, it is it is a very good thing. Definitely. But on the other hand, I imagine Resk is getting very frustrated with this. He's been consistently building a lead, running away out in front. And before the 10 minutes are up, or long way before the 10 minutes are up, seeing it all undone and everyone right back on the back of Reska's bumper, ready for having another go. And in addition, Reska now, for the first time, I think, uh, this race has another person right behind him, and that is Livium Fox. Yes, someone who we saw make a move for second quite recently before that caution got called as well. Very last minute move but it's going to make a key difference in the start for our next green flag sprint. It'll be interesting to see if Lithium Fox can just keep up with Resca next time the green flag flies. Yeah, I'm really curious to see that too. Especially tucking into a slipstream a little bit and just following Resca's lines might make a big difference here. Because, of course, we know these cars are absolutely identical. When it is just a case of driving differently, then you can change that during the race. You can look at what somebody else is doing and think, okay, that line looks good for you. I'm going to try it. But yeah, if we do get the same situation where Reska just pulls away from the rest of the grid, what could 
the battle for P2 do to catch back up to him? Is there like a sort of slipstream help you can give each other on this short of an oval? Uh, there is a slipstream help you can give each other, but on a track this short, it really isn't going to make a big difference. Although these are 700 horsepower race cars, the speeds here are still quite low, and they're not going to feel aerodynamic effects of slipstreaming all that much. So there'll be no bump drafting like you'd see at Talladega here. Now here, you're more likely to see more of a road racing experience where getting alongside will just slow each other down. Getting defensive will just slow you down and let the person in front run away. All right, so in that case, we'll be hoping that Lithium Fox, for the sake of getting a bit of action in, uh, as they're lining up double file now, um, Lithium Fox can keep up with Reska, maybe force him a little bit to the lower side as they're doubling up. Get yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, I've seen this all the way up and down the field as well. This makes a good opportunity for everyone to start moving forwards or just stay defensive as well. No doubt that's a game plan for everyone on the inside. While everyone on the outside line is thinking, okay, what progress can I make here? See them running out the final corner. Pace car is in, getting ready to start and go green flag racing one more time. See the lights turn green right there. Engines roar into life as we see Recoware going, uh, getting a good start, but not being able to make progress with it, not being able to find a position. Fox staying second. Uh, Dracox losing a position as well, dropping to fourth, but nonetheless, fighting to try and get back into third as we see the two of them go around again. Another caution, unfortunately. Well, let's let's see the replay of what happened here. Yeah, I think we just missed that one, so I'm quite curious to see this one too. We are on Akito Azazagawa right now. Oh, and there's a little, there's a crashing already starting right in front of that. Yeah, that's uh, Drocox up in front. Uh, the accident develops there and they just run into it. Let's see what happens here. Oh, uh, what was that? It's yeah, still not entirely clear, is it? It's still not entirely clear. Maybe something here? No, that is... No, not that one. Who was involved in that? Was it Ruby that was involved? No, it was not Ruby. It was, uh, it was Drocox David. was involved. I know that. I can't remember the other person. I think it was... I think it was second and third. No, third and fourth, I believe it was. Okay, let's see. Time. Let's see. Yeah, let's this just, was good. Uh, let's just watch Soleil Drocox at the start of the green flag, then. We're still bunched up. Uh, still under caution here in the replay. That's a bit earlier. Well, Maybe. that's okay. I think this way we probably won't miss it, and we know they're going to be in caution for a little while longer as well. All formed up, double file this time. Ready to start making a move. See how the engines roar into life. So this Neko is Soleil. Right there. Yeah, and Soleil and Dirty Kohai. David cuts right behind. Rekoware. Dirty Kohai, that's the one, yeah. So we see Drocox slipping behind here, and uh, we're going to get a lunge up here a little bit of getting a little bit low and just it looks like Ooh. just a small overspeed for Drocox there just pushes them wide up into Dirty Kohai's line however that incident <laughs> seemed to give a lot of damage to a lot of people it did it was a real roadblock that one and people behind who are just trying to get the race going are certainly not ready for something like that So, as we have now a third, of, a third of the race over, let's quickly go through the current standings. We have Reska Kioso in P1 right now, followed by Livium Fox and then David Katz, who just narrowly escaped that incident right there. Ruby Nekomata right behind that, with Rekover now in P5. Akita Sasagawa is in P6. Asa, the Nyampai in P7. Eric Gregg is in P8. Soleil Drokrox is in P9. Dirty Kohai is currently in the pits. Now one lap down on the rest of the grid. Uh, Mentrix is currently in P11. If I see this correctly, 15 laps down on the rest of the grid. 
that will have been a sizable repair, I'm sure. But nonetheless, still worth staying in the race because, of course, we've got points down at 12. We go green again. We see Reska running ahead, uh, following uh, Lithium Fox there. Nekoware up in fourth. Oh, so there's a, a move different. again from Akito Sasagawa to the inside. Oh, yeah. Trying to just keep it a little bit more tight, playing a little bit more cautious. Loses some speed being cautious as we see Nekoware spinning all by themselves there. Car goes around, no damage. And the next caution is out. That was probably the incident that did it, which is a shame, because I'm looking at that thinking, we could have just carried on racing there. That looks, you know, no one got caught up, but never mind. The automated system says it's a caution, so it's a caution. Let's not call it the automated system, let's call it the race stewards. Oh, have we got live stewards for this? No. Okay, cool, got it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, we have the AI stewards being live. <laughs> ah, our robot overlords, got it. Exactly. So yeah, well, this is one thing you can't fault them on is they do want to keep this race safe and clean, and they do want to avoid people getting hurt, so credit to them for that. And that is very important. Health is very important. Do not hurt yourself. Yeah, ex exclamation mark. <laughs> Do not hurt yourself. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, speaking of health as well, uh, I'm just checking with our viewers quickly. How long have you been sitting for? Do you need to stand up and stretch your legs? Do you need to drink some water? Because uh, we're, still, we're still barely halfway through this race. We're going to be here for a while. We've got a lot of action left and a lot of unfinished business our drivers want to see through to the end. What's going to happen? Is Rusko going to run away with this one or is someone else going to come up and challenge for the lead? Just gonna have to stay tuned and uh, find out. Very good shout with drinking something. That actually makes me want to drink something of my water bottle. Excellent, good choice. In fact, you know what? In solidarity, I'll... I'll do the same thing. Go on. Yeah, but you have Coca Cola, so. I also have water. You know, I'm oh. trying to stay at least a little bit healthy here. <laughs> ah, fair enough. Well, you could have gotten Coke Light or something. <laughs> that is true. I would have preferred to, but never mind. It will do. This will do. I mean, it still tastes very good, so at least it's still got that going for it. That is perfect. There's nothing better than some good tasting water. Especially if it's cold and refreshing on a, on a sunny day. I don't know how it is for you right now, but in Austria recently it's been getting so hot already even though it's just the month of April. Yeah, I'm currently in England, and it's been more or less the same here. Things aren't so warm that you feel like a t-shirt is too much, but it's definitely warming up to the point where I think everyone's starting to feel a lot more comfortable, and staying hydrated is definitely becoming more important. Well, I was shopping today in, sh in short trousers and, and a t-shirt, so... Oh, I envy you. I, uh, <laughs> I love that kind of weather. <laughs> well... Uh, I, I envy you because that means that in two months I'm not going to have to burn. <laughs> that is true. Uh, well, you're, you're not going to have to burn. And anyway, and anyways, they're bunching up now. They're getting side-by-side, -side, double file. Rescue Kyoso right next to Lithium Fox. Let's see if Lithium Fox this time can get a bit of a better launch to maybe stay side by side into T1 and 2. Definitely, we're seeing a lot of pressure there from Katsu as well, who looks like he wants to make a move here in the start as well, but gets a slow start as Sagawa storming straight past into third place. Reska running a little bit wide there, giving Fox a chance to slip back to the inside. We see the mid to rear of the field still running mostly too wide as well. Everything to play for here amongst these drivers. I mean, Eric Gregg is there in the grey 31, has everything to fight for, currently P3 in the standings. A bit further up here, Ruby still has to make up a few positions, only in P5 right now, the championship leader. Definitely, but that's still a big improvement from the 10th where we saw her about 15 minutes ago. We see another spinner there in the back. Yeah, Ruby's still making good progress, no doubt. Happy with what she's got so far, but still with an eye on the prize, nonetheless. Let's see, we have another caution right now. 
Oh, this time so it was... Drocox and Asas and Yanpire, just that... a little bit of touching in the corner. That is pretty much a carbon copy of what we saw earlier, just with a little bit of less collection afterwards. It is, yeah, completely agree. But one thing I, we will have to mention right here is that Akito Asasagawa, even though there was quite some, there were quite a few problems for him in the start of the race, and he never seemed to have the pace, as it seems like, I think there's a lucky dog coming through. Uh, that might be someone who just spun out during that. Oh no, I think you're right. That does look like a lucky dog being awarded. Um, yeah. 30 Kohai, currently two laps down. I guess that's soon to be one lap? Or either that was three laps down and it's now two laps. It is now two laps. I see. Okay, with you. We have Soleil Jurocrox and Rekuware both exiting the pits right now. They are going to rejoin the grid on the lead lap, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, the pace car is right behind them. Yeah, that looks like it wasn't even damaged. It looks like it was just a planned stop, top up the fuel a little bit. Maybe change the tyres? I'm not sure how tyre wear is in these. But nonetheless, according to plan, nice and quick and losing just a few positions for it. We are halfway through the race almost now, so that, I mean, if not now, when should the people else stop? It is surprising to me that we haven't seen Reska dive into the pits yet. Yeah, I'm wondering if Reska's just good to go for the whole race, because one of the things these cautions will do is save fuel. So, mm. you know, you could well start thinking, I don't have enough fuel to run the whole race, green flag. Well, so far, you don't have to. And uh, we could be approaching the point where drivers are able to make the rest of the race in the fuel they've got. And any cautions beyond that just means they'll be finishing overfueled. That is correct. After all, in these caution laps, they do require much less fuel than they would in under green flag condition. So Definitely. So yeah, we've got, as I said earlier, we've got we've got them bunching up now again. We've got Akito and P3 on the inside there of David Katze. Uh, it's been... This, this is sort of rewarding the more consistent drivers, I reckon. Uh, with all of the cautions that we've seen, it's mostly the people that are, let's say, too overly ambitious getting put back. And the more consistent right in the front as we are already green again and Reska got the launch again but Akito now going on the inside for P2 keeping back however Lithium Fox taking the line and getting seems like a good run out of that corner definitely I thought I saw David Katz making a run there as well for third but as a Sagawa just managed to get it hooked up on that inside line and just get a nice clean exit just putting the car in a good defensive position there and uh, holding on to third for now David Katz no doubt thinking there's some progress there that could be made and of course that's Ruby Nikamata there in fifth another driver who I reckon still got a lot of progress she wants to make I mean if Ruby doesn't want to go for the win here then why would she even be here she won the race at Lime Rock Park might as well go for it here I guess definitely and show us what somebody who's used to oval racing can do as well We've not seen an opportunity to get a lot of moves in. I'm wondering if at some point we're going to start seeing people being a little bit defensive about accidents as well, just leaving a f little bit more than a car's weight for each other as well, just to avoid the cautions we've seen so far. Nonetheless, putting David Katza under a lot of pressure through that corner as well. Yeah, this battle for P4, uh, off, well, battle for P2. It seems like Reska is getting rid of the grid a bit. I, I don't know why that came to mind, but that worked. <laughs> As Lithium Fox is being put under pressure by Akito there, and it seems like David Katz is now really battling for P4 right now with Ruby. As a little bit of a gap is opening up. Definitely, yeah. We see Ruby nice and close, ready to make a move. Seems to be lining up for a bit of a lunge. Not this time, running a little bit wider, but getting it hooked up and back on track as well. 
I also noticed Azusagawa running a little bit wide through turn one as well behind Lithium Fox. All clean, all safe, but nonetheless, if Lithium Fox is watching the mirrors, might be a few extra sweats being dropped for that. A few extra sweats being dropped. Some of the phrasings here come out kind of odd, don't they? <laughs> Some of the what? The phrasings. Like, the wordings of these things. Doesn't matter, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So, that, let's see. Livium Fox is being put under very heavy pressure by Akito Zagawa right now. Um, it seems like Livium usually goes for a bit of a higher entry. However, yeah. the, the previous corner was very l down low in order to defend from Makita. Well, think about your road racing experience as well. These are rear-wheel drive cars. They are fastest with a slightly late apex, but that leaves you vulnerable to an attack. So it could be that we're seeing Lithium Fox here trying to take a slightly more defensive line just to try and secure second rather than try and chase for first. That seems like Soleil has caught up to the Battle of Ruby versus David. It's now losing a bit of ground again, but taking it down inside line, being able to keep at least in the slipstream of Ruby. Yeah, definitely. And no doubt interested in what Ruby's up to as well. She looks like she's exploring a lot as well, like trying different lines. And even the ones that don't seem to work out entirely well. Don't drop her off the back of uh, David Katz's rear bumper. Right behind them, we have the battle for P7, where Eric Gregg is currently leading Wreckerware. And we have Dirty Kohai just following them, although being two laps down right now still. Yeah, I imagine they're just waiting for uh, another caution and another lucky dog to try and do some of that lapping damage. Well, that seemed like a good move here from Wreckerware, moving to the inside line, being able to make it stick rather easily there. Definitely, yeah. Being able to adapt your line is super important in oval racing, and it looks like Nakawa's become quite good at it. Oh, but Eric is, is back on it. Eric does not want to give up any points if he has to. No, definitely not. We see them going too wide through turns one and two. Eric Gregus on the inside. Not able to build up the speed for the exit, though, and Wreckerware stays ahead for now. But no doubt has to be looking out for another attack as we see Eric Gregus going around the long way as well. Seems that a little extra speed on the exit can help get something done this straight. Not quite. Come on, Eric, losing a bit here. This this means that Dirty Koi has to go a bit slower here as not interfere in this battle. Well, this is something else that I'm not entirely sure how it works here at the moment. It could be that blue flags are just advisory. It could be that Dirty Kohai is looking to try and make some progress and just crank in better lap times. Which, of course, means overtaking. But these, uh, this group of lead cars now just came back up to Mentrix. And it seemed to bunch up David and Ruby quite a bit here. It really has. Traffic giveth and track of taketh away. Uh, as we see track Ruby hath, ready for attack. Track hath taketh away. I think I meant track taketh away, but yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean about the phrasing is getting weird. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, we're seeing <laughs> Ruby getting said. very hungry for that position. Yes. Seeing Ruby getting very hungry for that position as well. No chance there, but nonetheless staying close enough. She is following so confidently through there. Like, you can really tell. Whatever downforce she is losing being that close, does not matter. She does not need it. Our Soleil has really caught up now to the both of them. Yeah, another last climbing back up uh, story as well going on. Oh, and this is David losing it! Spins it around. No yellow yet. Now, David Katzer rejoins safely, still on the lead lap, but with a bit more progress to make as well. And the race stays green, so for everybody else involved, this uh, this show is still on the road. 
The show is still on the road as Lithium Fox is currently still in P2 in front of Akito Asasagawa. They both have been... Well, Akito has been ra rather nicely sitting in P3, just looking at, I guess, what lines Lithium is taking uh, out of the exit. However, Akito taking a much lower line on the exit here. Yeah, it looks like another one of those late apexes just to try and eke out the maximum lap time as well. But, uh, because with this kind of gap, that's exactly what's going to close it, is just cranking out the fastest laps you can. You're not in a position to attack, so you might as well just go faster. Having said that, he's, they are under pressure from Ruby Nikamata there as well. So, another reason to keep the pace up as well. Ruby seems to be catching quite heavily here, and Akito getting oh, almost a bit unsettled. Definitely. And I wonder if this is where we'll start seeing some of our more rookie oval races as well, people are used to road racing. Maybe experiencing a little bit of fatigue because we are approaching eight minutes of green flag racing. Indeed, we're almost three quarters through the entire race now. And real quick to mention, we are currently 11 cars in the running. Unfortunately, Tars the 14th and Wyatt Natus have not made it so far. Both have been involved in some incidents early on and are unfortunately out of the race. However, we still have quite a lot of people racing. We have Reska Kyoso looking to take the championship lead right now with a very demand, oh, demand, commanding lead. We have Lithium Fox right now, as we see, battling with Akito Asazagawa, of course, and Ruby right behind them. However, Ruby is not alone. She is sort of dragging Soleil along. Sort of. Someone else thinking that if they just keep it consistent, then maybe an opportunity will present itself here. Especially as we're at nine minutes of green flag running. We have got another fun flag coming up in one minute. So this will be a good opportunity for anyone to make a last minute pass. Just lock it in and then carry on from that position as well. Oh, this will be very important for a few of the cars that have dropped a bit back. We have Recoware, for example, by, uh, a bit further back, as well as Eric Gregis and David Katz, so they could catch back up to the, well, to the lead group. Definitely, yeah, and then get back to trying to make some progress as well, much like we've seen Drakox do, we've seen Nikamata do as well. We've seen the recovery driver is very possible here. It is absolutely on. Everything is still to fight for. Indeed it is, and it seems like all oh, they're coming very closely together there, Akito and Ruby, as they are both lapping Mentrix here, who is on the inside lane. Oh, Akito almost getting the rear a bit unsettled there. Almost, but that's how you can tell someone's really pushing when you just see the back end squirreling around a little bit. It's so satisfying. See Ruby Acosta nice and close, putting a lot of pressure on as well. Not able to get alongside just yet, but absolutely hunting around for an opportunity, trying to make the outside line work. Looks a little bit quicker, the small overlap, as we see Asagawa turned around over Ruby's nose. And I guess this is the fun flag being rendered irrelevant. Yeah, looks like it. That was just, well, just an overlap and two cars wanting the same bit of outside track. Yeah, exactly. You see the experience as well in Ruby's driving there as well. A lot of trust put in and running quite close to the wall, so slight little contact and look how much is scuffed up the side of Nikomata's car. Wow. Not as badly as Azizagawa though, who got turned around yeah, and that... crushed that front corner into it. Yeah, and uh, as as far as I know, all of them have one free uh, full repair, fast repair, I think is what, what it's called. And, as was said earlier, and now it's finally happening, Reska Kios is in the pits, as is Lithium Fox and Ruby. The three fastest, well, consistently, I would say fastest people on track are now in the pits. Definitely. I imagine that's not the plan for Ruby, who is in there repairing damage, probably spending that one free repair. But for the other two, I expect that is going to be fuel, just trying to make sure they're covered to go for the rest of the distance from here. And because they're almost certainly going to lose positions to that and have to climb back up if 
those two want to be fighting for the win. We see Fox come out ahead of Reska there, I believe. Uh, Livion Fox is right, is right behind there. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, so those two hold positions relative to each other. But you can see there Reska coming up and just joining the back of the pack there as well. Uh, but we have also David Katz, Eric Gregis, and Dirty Kohai all in the pits as well. So they might be going for uh, fuel too. Whereas the car is getting raced, so I think that it means that they're getting tires as well on the outside there at least. I expect so, yeah, just get maximum pace as you see them racing for the pit exit there because the lead car that is laps down is the only one to get the lucky dog. So getting that pit stop done quick will be critical. And this means that right now we have a lead of Soleil Drukrox in front of Recoware and Ruby Nekomata in P3. Right after that we have Reska Kyoso and Lithium Fox. So this is going to be a bit of a battle, having Soleil in the lead here. Maybe this is where Soleil can show the oval experience. Yeah, I imagine so. Because a huge part of racecraft is just taking someone faster than you and keeping them behind you. Especially with that Recoware buffer there as well. These two excited thinking this could be it. This could be their chance for first and second in the race. And all they've got to do is hold off the others who they know are quicker. But quicker isn't all you need to get past. The Recoware buffer. Let's just... Let, yeah, okay. I mean, that's... Not that I'm trying to belittle Recoware's accomplishments here. Recoware's doing really well this race. Recoware is Mr. doing really well. as well. Yeah. So, I just found it funny like, just to call someone a buffer. I mean, I, ne I never thought about it like that. It does make sense that I think twice and thrice about it. However, we are green now, and it seems like Recoware and Soleil both got a rather good start. However, there are three abreast right behind that. Oreska getting the better of that battle, however, trying to get to the lower line here. Lydian Fox and Ruby in the rear touching. David Cutts taking advantage of that. And Eric Gregus as well in front of Ruby now. Ruby losing quite a lot of places as two cars go into the wall definitely that's part of rubbing the racing though uh, the wall is there to stop you and you know what these cars are still keeping up good momentum we see a little bit of contact there between Reska and is that uh, Drew Cox oh, we see Eric Gregg is going into the that'll be our next caution our next yeah and this now means that the former buffer is now in the lead. Recoware, congratulations. This is, I think, the first lead laps that Recoware is going to have. Yeah, you're right. Because if, um, if I remember correctly, Recoware is one of the people who missed qualifying as well and had to start from the very back of the field. Yeah. So this really is a last first story going on here right now. Recoware is a quick driver. They have shown that last time around at Lime Rock Park, but obviously that it was a road course. Now we're on an oval, so being able to do well in two different kinds of, well, racing worlds as it is here, as we see Dirty Goa getting the lucky dog, um, is, is great. It's great to see. Definitely. And, you know, I completely agree that Reco has been very quick this race and done very well with that. But the second thing you need to get to this position as well is consistency, the ability to keep your race clean. Reco has done quite well with that. It's not been perfect, there's been some touching here and there, but that's oval racing. And despite all of that, Reco has survived and managed to survive all the way into first. And another thing that I need to mention right now is the Dirty Kohai. We said two cautions ago, we said they are two laps down. Now they're on the lead lap again. That's Lucky Dog for you. There we are. One more variable thrown into the mix. And Dirty Kohai, no doubt, looking ahead, thinking what positions can they gain here. Because, of course, it's all very good points from this point now. It is, and it's only 10 laps. It is only 10 laps to go. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure right now whether we have a uh, green, f uh, yellow flag finish, or whether we have extra la I think we do have extra laps if if the finish were to fall under a caution. Uh, I believe so too. Let me try and look that up quickly. 
So in the meanwhile, the current standings with 10 laps to go, we have Wreck-Aware currently in the lead, in front of Livium Fox, then Resca Chioso, Soleildra, Crocs in P4, Ruby Nekomata in P5, Akito Zagawa in P6, Eric Gregis in P7, David Katz in P8, Dirty Kohainer in P9, back on the lead lap, Mentrix in P10, a few laps down, and Asa in P11, a few laps down. Past the 14th and Wyatt Natus, unfortunately, no longer in the race. And as we said, Rekaware is currently, for the first time, leading this race. And as they're lining up now, side by side again, the first row is going to be led by both Reco and Livium. So. I'm just, I'm just wondering right now, how long will Reska take to go for the move? We saw Reska lead large portions of this race without too much of conten contention. So we are lights out. And it looks like Livium is taking a f very fast line on the outside there. Easily being able to take P1 and Reska also on the outside overtaking Reko. Reko just losing two positions in two corners and one straight. And there's a huge touch. And that was Ruby taken out. Oh, that is such a shame. Ruby's done so well trying to climb back up from an early accident and a rough qualifying. And to see it all come undone here is really sad. See Ruby just carrying a bit too much speed and coming up to the upper lane. I think yeah. this one is on Ruby. I think so. And it's also that typical corner to corner contact, turning someone around up into the barrier that we've seen a few times now as well. It's always painful, it's always does a lot of damage to the car. Yeah, and with six laps to go now. Well, I think Ruby has spent the fast repair already, so not looking too good. Let's see where the lead is. They're currently coming around again. Ruby is still in. And the left is getting raised now. The leaders are passing, but the exit of the pits is on the other side. And Ruby's exiting. Will she beat the Waiting. pace car? Oh, why is she stopping? I'm wondering what that is as well, because it looked like she was quite eager to get moving. You know, as soon as the car came off the jacks, the wheels hit the ground spinning. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, stopped to let the field through. And this now means that she didn't beat the pace car and is now a lap down. That is a terrible shame for Ruby, who's no doubt already frustrated in that car. Unlucky Ruby, I'm sure you'll get them next time. But for today, it looks like it's coming down to Lithium Fox versus Resca Kyoso. Currently he's lined up first and second. Lithium Fox with the inside line, but Resca, as we know, probably the fastest person on this track. Still, uh I imagine Lithium Fox is feeling quite confident. Oh, Ruby with a lucky dog. Never mind, I guess Ruby will start on the lead lap for the f final few laps. Well, we'll that see how much there will be and how much she can catch up in these, but yeah. Definitely. I think that complicates our job as well, because now we've got Ruby joining the back of the field, who wants to make a lot of progress, that'll be one to watch. As if we didn't already have our eyes awfully busy already between Fox and Kyoso and their battle for first here. Indeed, but they haven't even lined up do double file yet. So, let's see. Ruby is already on the back of the grid here and is currently in P9. However, there's also Imentric Science and Asa the Nyampire right in front. So, Ruby would have to make up 10 positions in order to make it to the lead battle. That is a long way to go. I know Zanes has been very generous with letting lap traffic through. As we see the cars go green again, single file, two laps to go. Lithium Fox leading the way, Resca Kyoso trying to keep pressure on, as we see Reco Ware as well, just trying to hold on to third, trying to keep that battle behind them frantic, just to try and keep themselves safe in third. 
We see Dracox there, trying to put a bit of pressure on, trying to escape the battle going on behind. Uh, Greg is running a little bit wide, letting Cats uh, through. And we have another caution. You see, something happened here with Asa. Oh, yeah. Just lost it all by themselves. I wonder if that's um, an old tyres mistake, maybe, because anyone who's being brave with uh, running the race on one set of tyres or trying to run them down as much as they can, this is where we'd see that un come undone. Indeed, so... Now we only have a few more laps to go. And could we find out whether we have a uh, finish on the caution? Uh, I couldn't find any information, so I think we're going to have to work with the assumption that we will be finishing under caution unless that three laps to go at the top of your screen doesn't change as they cross the start-finish line here. I think oh. that's what we're going to have to go by. Would they then start uh, with three green laps to go? Is that how that works? If that's the case, yes, that's how that would work. I see, so we'll see them come across the finish line now, and it's two laps to go, so it seems like we... No, it's back to three laps! It seems like we have no finish under caution. Excellent, okay, three laps of green flag racing to wrap this up. So that podium you're seeing there between Fox, Kyoso, and Recoware is not locked in yet, that is not secure. These three drivers still have the whole podium to play for and a bunch of hungry drivers waiting right behind them as well, seeing if they can just nab at least one step on that podium for themselves. Don't forget, we also have Eric Gregg is currently in P6, who is looking to further his current P3 in the standings. And right behind them, we have Akito Asasagawa, who is who can be very quick. We've seen him up there. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, this cigar feels like one of our unlucky stories from today. Alright, so quickly with three laps to go, we have Olivia Fox in P1, Reska Kyoso in P2, Rekka Wern in P3, Soleil Dro Crocs in P4, David Katz in P5, Eric Gregg is in P6, Akito Sasagawa in P7, Dirty Koha in P8, Ruby Nekomata still in P9, Mentrix in P10, and Asa currently in the pits as P11, but Mentrix and Asa are both a few laps down. So, we've just crossed the, crossed the start finish line. Maybe this lap, the pace car will come in. I'm trying to count this in my head. I think it is. No doubt, whatever suspense we're feeling as well, it's gonna be a hundred times worse inside of those cars as well. All these drivers looking at each other, almost like that scene at the end of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, wondering who's going to flinch first and who's going to come out on top. And the pace car is in. Resco is then. very close to Lithium. Very close. Lithium Fox, of course, leading the race, coming up into turn one. Bit of a gap to Resco, but Resco still ready to make a move should the opportunity come up. Uh, Fox going very wide there just to try and... Oh, God, and we see another accident. Oh, no. Is that Nikomata again? That seems to be Ruby Nikomata and Dirty Kohai involved in this incident, yes. And another caution. Okay. So, from what I've been told, we have a fixed number of maximum cautions in the end we can have. So, I mean, we are not going to do this forever as... Where is everyone? Or the behind there. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a fixed amount of cautions that we can do. However, that is a very large number from what I remember. Let me let me check if I can find any information on that. Sure thing. It's always a danger as well with these moments where every driver knows it's now or never as well. So if there's a move on, you have to try it because if you're going to make progress, this really is your last chance to do it. And of course I was told the information in voice chat and I did not write it down. In any case, um, from what I remember, theoretically, it was said that the race could be 
one hour and 30 minutes instead of 45 minutes. Let's, well, I don't know if you want that, I, I guess. However, let's not hope for any too much more incidents. Let's say it like that. Definitely. Fingers crossed we can keep this clean and uh, just get a nice, exciting battle through to the end that all our drivers can be happy with. We currently still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine drivers all on the lead lap. Rubin Ekumata and Dirty Gohai both have made it out, uh, still on the lead lap. Fantastic. Is, is it coming past Imentrix there? So, of course, we have the lead again. The three, Livium Fox, Reska Kyoso, and Reko Ware. I mean, sort of Reska being sandwiched by sort of blue cars. But I don't, yeah. I don't think that'll be enough for them to work together. <laughs> no. It's, uh, it's also very difficult, like, pulling teamwork tricks as well in oval racing. I imagine this is just going to be everyone for themselves here. It might very well be. Oh. Um. Did I just see this correctly, real quick? What's up? Oh, yes. We have on the rear of Rekowes' car, we have an oval. Oh, did you not notice that? I, yeah, I, I guess I skillfully ignored that as the pace car is coming in. And immediately a shunt between Rekoware and Reska Kyoso. Rekoware taking the best of it, taking the inside line, taking position two. But so far, there are quite, it's quite a few side-by-side -side battling going on. And Reska is back in P2 now. Definitely. I'm sure Lithium Fox is going to be thrilled with that one as that's helped them build up quite a big lead over Reska. But Reska's a quick driver. We know that gap's going to disappear quite quickly. Uh, coming into the final lap, see how quickly it'll disappear. We see a bit of con between Rekoware and Drokox there. Two of them Ooh. running too wide. Drokox tipped into the wall there as well. But we're not going... We're not going yellow again because it seems like the checkered flag is out and Lithium Fox won the race. Congratulations to Lithium Fox, that was a fantastic drive. Ruska Kyoso second there. And Eric Gregg is somehow made it into P3 now. Oh, that's going to be fantastic progress. I imagine that's uh, Gregg is up into second in the championship as well, if I've done the maths right in my head. My very, unlikely, but I tried. Might very well be as David Katz is in P4, Dirty Kohai made it into P5, and Ruby only in P6 today. Akito Sasakaba is in P7. Soleil Jurokrox has not finished the race yet, I believe. Very damaged the car. Wait. Is she on the inside? Uh, no. There's that. They can still reach the track from there, but it's just a question of is that engine still switched on and running? Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, in any case, so Lion Jurokrox P8, we've got Rekoware is in P9. Uh, I do think we do have the overall results like this as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have Livian Fox in, uh, winning the race, Rascal Kiosk in P2. Eric Reg is in P3, uh, keeping his trend alive. David Katz in P4, Dirty Co in P5, Ruben Ekumata in P6, Akito Osasakaba in P7, Soleil Drokrox in P8, Rekoware in P9, Imentrix Sainz in P10, and Asa the Nyumpire in P11. Tars the 14th, White Natus and Blanc Ryosaki unfortunately did not finish or did not start the race today. That finish kind of surprised me. It came quicker than I expected. Yeah, it feels like uh, the last hour and a bit has uh, really flown past. This has been quite exciting. And uh, even the downtime during the cautions haven't felt too boring either because the suspense, I don't know about you, but I really felt the suspense through all of them. Oh, there was quite some suspense going on here. And, wow. I mean... This is, honestly, this has shifted my view on oval racing a bit. It is good, isn't it? I, mean, 
I like, I liked, I always liked racing it myself. However, watching it always felt weird to me a bit. However, seeing this now, seeing this finish at the end now, this was wow. This was there was so much action going on. You 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 never knew where you have to watch, and even during the cautions, as you say, with the with the lucky dogs and so, there was always something going on. Um. So, big congratulations to the winner of today's ra race, Livium Fox. Also, congratulations to Resca Kioso for taking over the championship leap for the VTRX today. And big congratulations to Eric Gregis for finishing on the podium a second time in a row. So, it seems like they've been doing rather well for themselves. And... Let me take this opportunity to thank you, April, for being here today with me. Uh, oh, it's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And we are going to be back next week where we are going to race at USA International Speedway, the dirt configuration. So <laughs> that's going to be the third different, well, type of race that these drivers will be participating in after the first one was a road course now obviously a tarmac oval and next time a dirt oval and it all will be well no it will not be next week it will be in two weeks i'm sorry it will be in two weeks obviously because next week we have a bunch of drivers participating in an iRacing endurance event so yeah in two weeks yeah just be ready. We we will be here in two weeks, and you can watch the action again on USA International Dirt. I've been Julian. With me has been April. This has been VTRX. Thank you for watching, and see you on the racetrack. <laughs>